Oui, Dahe. Jaji wa Jaji wa Tseta. John Horseshoe Jaji Abrin. Humpale Wanopin Angaha Topi. My name is John Horsechief and today we're making jokers. The reason I picked this exercise is because it's relatively easy to make and can be made with scrap materials. All right, let's get started. Wajaji Nikaji. Osage people have worn chokers since time immemorial. Chokers have served many different purposes throughout our history. They have adorned and protected the necks of our warriors. They have also been worn as symbols of social standing. Shells are often added to the chokers. The Osage word for the freshwater mussel shell is tsuke. Tsuke. To many people, that tsuke was a representation of the sun and life. All right, let me introduce the materials we're going to use today to construct a men's choker. We're going to be using one and a half inch hair pipe bone, eight millimeter brass or metal beads, eight millimeter plastic or glass beads, one two inch abalone shell. This is the style of choker I'm going to create today. It has nine spacers in it, two clasps and two ties. The spacers, clasp and ties are constructed from scrap leather that I have here. We have our sinew and then we are going to um, create a design with 64 eight millimeter glass beads. And then we will affix our abalone shell. All right, so these are materials you need to make a men's choker. All right, I'm gonna be going over the tools today I'm gonna be using to construct a choker. I've got my ruler, pencil, my leather scissors, an awl, a hole punch, some sort of adhesive, and today I'm using two 2.125, two and one eighth inch big eye needles from Beatsmith. Uh, these, you can find these online for about a dollar a piece. They make uh, any project you're doing with hair pipe bone uh, so much easier. Uh, you can find a pair of hole, you can find a hole punch at Walmart or online for about seven or eight bucks. And you can find a pair of leather scissors for seven or eight bucks, depending on the quality you want to get. So these are the tools I'm going to be using today and uh, let's get started. All right, in this part, we're going to prepare the materials, the leather materials. The materials we have is some spare buckskin and some vegetable tan rawhide. We're going to use the vegetable tan rawhide to create your spacers, the spare buckskin to create your clasps and ties. First step we'll make is the clasp right here. This goes around the end of your choker and it gives it a more finished look. I needed to make a template. I found an extra spare card of mine that I had. And that's how I came up with this. I'm a, a fan of templates. I like to create this so I can have this pattern for later. So this is the shape that you're gonna come out with. I needed something so I took a spare business card and um, I made like an egg shape. And so overall, the clasps I use on this one are about two and three quarters inches long and about an inch, two inches wide. So I came in here and I made a shape like this. And kind of smoothed it out. There we go. this shape out so here's roughly my shape this is the shape that I like to use to make my clasp so then I'll take a piece of scrap leather and I will trace my template on there the template makes it nice because they're both the exact same size the other 
two circles and I'm going to cut those out. It's always best just to take your time on all these projects. It's well worth the patience. As I cut my patterns out and prepare my materials, I always try to think good positive thoughts and think about uh, how much fun this is going to be to wear and you know if it's a present how happy it will make someone. Okay, so now I'm gonna make my ties. Uh, ties I'm gonna make, this is how they're gonna look. That's a relative shape and length. Those are two pre-cut, rough, cut-out ties. So I'm looking for a long piece of scrap leather. That one is kind of damaged, but yes, I can get a tie out of there. I can get a tie out of this side. That's perfect. So in there, I'm going to have to shape this to get, there's one tie I can shape down, and there's another tie right there, so perfect. I got two ties out of this scrap leather. I'm going to show you how I'm going to make those real quick. So that is a possible weak spot right there. one side right here okay. so we have that one and it's a little bit thick right here so I'm gonna come over here and trim this side up real quick and so that's good there's one right there I want to make the other one will go through the end of one of the clasps. All right, let me get this one knocked out. I always take my time. I love to work on projects relaxes me, reinforces my beliefs and my culture, connects me to my ancestors, plus I look cool, so there. get the gist and that is how we make two ties so we have the two ties we have our two clasps on the end now we're going to make our spacers okay what I'm gonna use today are approximately a half inch wide and they are about almost two inches long so how I would do is as I take a piece of scrap like this and then I will square it off with my pencil or my handy dandy leather pen, which I got at Tandy's. Take this straight across. So now I need to get a half inch marks. I'll put some there, and I'll put one here. I'll put one here. So let me darken this in so you guys can see it. Let me see if this one works. And 
you know, a half inch is a good guide for this. And then we're going to make it fit. I'm going to customize each one. So I'm going to cut this strip out. All right. So you want to end up with a shape like this. You know, you can tell there's a little bump right here. It's not perfectly straight or flat, but fix that. Then I come in here. And every two inches, I just make a mark. two-inch sections score my marks right now a one two three four and I want them evenly spaced out so. then I'm going to take my hole punch for this one, since it's just a thin piece of sinew going through there and a needle, I'm going to use the smallest punch that they have. So I'm going to go through here, put that right in the middle, go all the way through, put that right in the middle, all the way through. There you go. So I'm going to make about nine more of these, eight more of these. We'll be good to go. All right, guys, we're going to start the construction of our men's choker. We have our materials all prepared. Um, one of the first steps I do is I lay out my design. In um, this instance, I'm going to go with a design like this. I got my bones, brass beads, and I'm having um, two sets of vertical lines. So I got red, black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red. And uh, that's the design I'm going to go with today. And it's going to be similar to this one, bone and bead. And um, with the abalone shell. So first thing I'm going to do is measure out my sinew. This is a, approximately a 15-inch choker. So I'm going to measure out about 20 inches for one strand. And then I'm going to use that same string and add about another 20 inches for that strand. So your string will be about 40 inches long. And this is going to create two rows or two strands of bones and beads for your choker. All right, now, next step we're going to do is attach our needles. As I was saying earlier, I like to use the uh, two needle method. It seems to go quicker. I can uh, keep the tension right. And uh, I just like using these big eye needles. So the big eye needle, that's the reason they call it a big eye, because it doesn't have a traditional hole in the end. It splits in the middle of the wire. So I come in here and thread that through. tail and I'm going to thread my other needle so on this design I always like to lay my design out first so I know what I'm working with and just to kind of get a good guess recently on one of our uploaded videos about how to make a women's traditional long necklace um, I saw a necklace board and it has these grooves that you can lay out your design in and that's a really great idea I think I'm gonna get me one next for when I have to design my bandoliers or my next set of ch my next choker so I got my two needles strung on the end of my sinew and this is gonna create two rows so uh, first thing I'll do is I'll go through the inside of my clasp this is where the beads are gonna be coming the beads are going to be got both needles through got them pulled nice and even and they're locked in here on one side like that okay so I 
will start stringing. And I'm going to go brass, bone, brass, spacer. And then I'm going to do this combination right here. So here we go. Okay, so I'm on the bottom one, but that's okay. Brass, bone, brass. Now I need a spacer. I'll do the second one, because I started on the second one. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the top row. My eight millimeter brass bead, a one and a half inch hair pipe bone, another brass bead, and then do the spacer. So going through the sometimes going through the brass and the and the bone, the end of your uh, line will get frayed, and that's where it's good to have your wax. But you could I, that's why I like to use these needles because they just doesn't get frayed as much. It's easy to go through. So it's the same process all over again. Brass. Bone brass. Do a spacer. Second row. Brass. My bone. My brass. Now we've come to the part where we are going to add our glass beads. We're going to use a uh, a red and a navy blue set of glass beads. So I'm gonna go with vertical lines. So I'm gonna go red, blue, red, blue. And I'm going a little fast on this one, but you want to take your time and just enjoy the process. Putting it together, making a well-constructed choker that is going to last a long time. That is going to, um, you know, that you're going to be able to use when you dance with. And so we got this. So now we're going to do another spacer. See it taking shape. Oops, I got that crossed. Cannot do that. Right, here we go. Alright, so you can see it taking shape. Now we're going to go for our second set of beads and so that was our first and so now we're going to add the second row in so depending on your neck size if you need a shorter choker you could always take out some of these beads and if and uh, you know what i mean you could always make it skinnier you could always go three rows and you can always make it bigger so there's a bunch of different ways to make your chokers. It's all it's all up to your imagination, your creativity. And then, you know, after you make a choker, you'll start noticing other chokers too. And then you'll want to, you know, maybe improve your design or mix it up. Like after I made a choker, I started noticing chokers on historical pictures, noticing the choker that my uh, great grandfather wore. And then you start noticing things. And so when I was looking at the older pictures, I noticed that a lot of times it was just bone and spacers. 
And then later on they were adding brass beads in and then later on they started adding glass beads and but I really like that freshwater mussel shell. It's very beautiful when you see like the old time ones and it just you know you think about the craftsmanship and work that must have went into it. So on this design I went red blue red blue and then I switched it up and went blue red blue red to kind of create this little section right here where the the blue is lined up so um, now we're going to add another spacer we're using nine spacers total nine spacers with four holes in them a piece it's going to be a four strand choker now we're going to start on the other side so i like to go for the symmetry so um, I'm going to go in here and repeat this pattern back the same way. So I'll start with the red right here. I'll mirror it, I should say. So the red and blue, red, blue. It's really simple. You can get really complex with your designs and you can use a bunch of different colors. It's all up to you. There's a lot of different beads out there. It doesn't have to be. 8 millimeter or glass, it, there's all sorts of different styles of beads. But these are the ones that I'm using. For this project here, I'm using the 8 millimeter brass beads, the 8 millimeter glass beads, the one and a half inch hair pipe bone, and a two inch abalone shell. see it taking shape this is the center so now we're gonna mirror it back so then that would be I like doing two rows at the same time because it keeps the tension nice on here when you re re originally start you'll have to hold it down on one side and pull it out but as you go through here you can see it lining up a little bit easier I was doing it with one and then my buddy said, hey, we got we got an extra needle here. Just go, let's, let's just try two. It was a great idea. So I pack, actually picked up this trick from one of my friends. So the double needles work really well. All right, so now here we're through with our, our bead part of our choker. We are going to add our bones on and then tie it out. So let's finish the other side, the mirror side that we decided. So overall, it's going to take 32 brass beads, 16 one and a half inch hair pipe bones. And we're going to go 4, 8, 16, 32. So 64 glass beads total and one two and a half, and one two inch abalone shell. Very beautiful shell. So we've come to the end of our first two set of rows we're halfway done constructing our choker and so we're going to tie off this end so I come in here and I carefully remove my sinew from my uh, big eye needle so this one is just supposed to come down here and slide out like that apparently this one's been tangled so let's see here fails but that's okay that's why we have a little bit of slack in our sinew so when it gets like this I can just cut it and then work on this off camera all right so we have our first two rows that are put together it's one continuous string we want to keep tension in here but not make it super tight because that puts unnecessary stress on the sinew so I'm gonna pull this through and kind of even them up and I'm gonna come here 
I'm going to do a square knot. I'm going to put four good knots on this bad boy. off. I'm going to leave just a tad bit there. And so with these little bits of strings, because there's wax inside this sinew, I can burn this off and it will hold together better. But that is how you secure the end of your choker. All right, another trick you can do, since I do have the adhesive, I will burn it off and then I'll put a dab of uh, super glue on top of there also. And that should keep it, I should keep this bad boy down. Do not want your stuff coming apart. We don't want that. I'm gonna put that on there. I'm gonna let that dry. And this is how we construct the first half of our men's choker. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up then we will attach our abalone shell to our choker, our ties, and we'll be ready to go. guys we got our choker constructed <clears throat> so we have our bone brass and glass beads all attached and tied together they're all tied off on this end right here they were started on this end you can see where the loops went through one string makes 20 string makes two strands and then they're both tied off over here so now we're gonna attach our ties I cut out two ties. This is their shape. This is the way they go together. So uh, they tie up like that. So I'm gonna attach them. Push them through. So yeah, it's a nice little quarantine project here, you know, while you're home. I took my extra scrap pieces of leather, and cut me out spacers, a clasp, and some ties. And then that is how it attaches. And it has a nice little finished look right there on the ends. And that's how we construct a choker. So the way the choker is now, you could wear this as a completed choker. This is a choker. So this would work. And a lot of people wear them like this, a bone and bead choker. We are going to add something else today. We're going to add an abalone shell to our choker. I'm going to show you how to attach that. All right, so let's attach it. Make it easy. I got my big eye needle. I need to cut me off a string of uh, some extra string of um, sinew. So this is 15 inches long. That should be plenty to tie off my shell. So let me thread my needle real quick. This is a two hole punched, center punched abalone shell. So there's two little holes already pre-drilled in here. I ordered these off Crazy Pro. Luckily, I get all my stuff from Cuggies and Supernaws at, at Supernaws down in Sky Toot. And so, uh, shout out to Cuggy and I like going to his store. All right, so I'm gonna start this one side, go through here. I'm gonna tie it right here onto the center point. And I just 
just go through here, go through the other side, I'm going to come around, and I'm going to go through the other hole to the back side of that. And so I went in one side, came around the center spacer in the center spot, and came back through the other side. It's very simple, very simple attachment. So I could just go through, I want to hide my knot, so I'm going to tie it on the other side. I'm going to go through here again. And then I'm just going to go ahead and thread my one end of my sinew through without a needle. You don't really need it for this. I just like work, that needle makes it so much easier to work. So I got it laced through twice. Come back here, remove my needle. I'm going to tie it on four square knots. Good knots. I'll cut it right there. Tie it off. Burn my little sinew. Melt it all together. There we go. Nice good knot. All melted together. There we go. You have your choker with your abalone shell attached and that looks really pretty so um thank you for joining me it's been a pleasure I hope you enjoyed making your choker if you have any questions put them in the comment box below and uh, I'll be making more videos soon thank you